They're worried about the spread of information, not disinformation. We're in the final countdown to British Home Secretary Preeti Patel's decision on the fate of Julian Assange, with the WikiLeaks founder's extradition to the United States due to be approved or rejected by the end of the month. Joe Lauria has a new article out with Consortium News on the various pressures that Patel is being faced with from both sides of this history-making issue at this crucial time. And I can't stop thinking, as this situation comes to a boil, about how absurd it is that the U.S. Empire is working to set a precedent which essentially outlaws information sharing that the U.S. doesn't like, at the same time, Western news media are full of hand-wringing headlines about the dangerous threat of disinformation. Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting has an article out titled Disinformation Label Serves to Marginalize Crucial Ukraine Facts about the way the mass media have been spinning that label to mean not merely the knowing distribution of false information, but also of information that is true but inconvenient to imperial narrative weaving. In defense of the U.S. narrative, corporate media have increasingly taken to branding realities inconvenient to U.S. information goals as disinformation spread by Russia or its proxies, writes Fair's Luca Goldmansor. Online platforms have been ramping up their censorship pro protocols under the banner of fighting disinformation and misinformation, and those escalations always align with narrative control agendas of the U.S. centralized empire. Just the other day, we learned that Twitter has a new policy which expands its censorship practices to fight misinformation about wars and other crises, and the Ukraine war, surprise, surprise, will be the first such situation about which it will be enforcing these new censorship policies. Then there's the recent controversy over the Department of Homeland Security's Disinformation Governance Board, a mysterious institution ostensibly designed to protect the American people from wrongthink coming from Russia and elsewhere. The board's operations, whatever they were, have been paused pending a review which will be led by Michael Chertoff, a virulent swamp monster and torture advocate. Its operations will likely be resumed in one form or another, probably under the leadership of someone with a low profile who doesn't sing show tunes about disinformation. And all this comes out after U.S. officials straight up told the press that the Biden administration has been deliberately sowing disinformation to the public, using the mainstream press in order to win an info war against the Kremlin. They've literally just been circulating completely baseless stories about Russia and Ukraine, but nobody seems to be calling for the social media accounts of the Biden administration officials to be banned. You see so many discrepancies between what the oligarchic empire says and what it actually does regarding the issue of disinformation, because the empire has no problem with disinformation. The empire that is built on propaganda and lies has no problem with propaganda and lies. It has a problem with the truth. They're not worried about disinformation. They're worried about information. They're worried about journalists using the unprecedented information-sharing power of the Internet to reveal inconvenient facts about the largest and most murderous power structure on Earth. They're worried about people finding out that they've been lied to their entire lives about their world, their nation, and their government. They're worried about people using their newly connected minds to decide together that they don't much like the status quo as it's been laid out for them, and deciding to build a new one. All the safeguards they're setting up now to manipulate the flow of information online are not there to eliminate lies. They're there to eliminate truth. These people have a vested interest in keeping things dark and confused, and we, the ordinary people of the world, have a vested interest in shining a big, inconvenient spotlight on everything. The elite agenda to keep things darkened is at direct odds with the people's agenda to get things enlightened. We are not being protected by a compassionate alliance of corporations and governments who only want us to know the truth. We are being manipulated and oppressed by an alliance of corporations and governments who want us to believe lies. That's why they are locking up Assange. 
That's why they are censoring the internet. That's why they're filling our minds with propaganda. And that's why we can't let them win.